Hello and welcome to Pursuit a Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis, I'm an audio reviewer and this is my video coverage for the Munich High End Show 2019. I'd like to thank my show coverage sponsors. Melco, GIK Acoustics, Telerium Q. I have created lots of videos as part of a coverage for the high end show and you'll find other videos like this in my channel. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, hit that like button, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and I'll be seeing you all soon. So for us, the journey started in 2012 with this little fellow here, the Nano IDSD. The Nano IDSD, as you can see, won an ISO award and we, we still believe we are one of, one of, if not the youngest company to ever win an ISO, which is a great achievement. So fast forward to 2018. And this little chap, the XDSD, yet another award winning product. So as you can see, as it says, we all love music. Music has no boundaries. It's been around forever and will always be around. So we started in the 1950s with vinyl. Then we moved to the 70s with the music system. And then the 90s gave us the iPod. And now it seems that the speaker, the all-in-one speaker is the way to go. And some of them, it has to be said, sound and look better than others. So, as you can see, it's just how we listen to music that changes. What we have identified, as I said, is four products that we think will get you interested. One of them is a high-res wireless streaming device. The next is an audiophile digital-to-analog converter. And the next is a revolutionary new high-speed amplifier, and of course, with tubes, and the next is some amazing natural sounding loudspeakers. Okay, so we've got a DAC, a streamer, an amplifier, and speakers, all of course, which are very high end. Okay, so this is it. This is the Frankenstein Hi Fi DAC that we are delivering to you. Is that not right, Julian? No? Yeah, I'm going to stop you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this was toast an idea of the design. And so, obviously, uh, it was great. You know, uh, I was really up for it, but I told him, like, no way, man. Uh, <laughs> so, what we did um, is. Should I, should I show them or no? Well, we didn't discuss that. Oh, no, no, no. Like seriously, I think it's time to see it. So we decided to make really cool, uh, a really nice product. So it does all that, except it looks acceptable, which is good enough. Uh, obviously the inspiration, uh, oh, next slide, man. Uh, the name is Aurora. I'm not sure why, but it's a great name. Uh, it's amazing. Like this is a really beautiful product and you will not want to stop looking at it exactly like a Boreal Aurora. So, next slide again. It changed a lot from the beats, uh, the little pills and things like this. We tried to make something that's going to be a throwback to the way everybody used to have a stereo in their house. You used to love using it, you used to like go back to it, and now it's gone. It's just a small Bluetooth speakers, and that does all the same function. And it just looks so cool. <laughs> I made it, huh? so it's normal, I say that. Uh, <laughs> so my inspiration, I'm French. I didn't went very far. Uh, just crossed the road from my apartment, and I was like, yeah, that, that sounds like a plan. So <laughs> uh, we used that. And the next one, yeah, it, it all started actually in... I was really stuck with this design. And uh, one day in Japan, oh. I, I came with the inspiration, and, um, and yeah. That, that's where we ended, like uh, Tada Endo, um, you know, it was all like trying to make it zen, get some beautiful material, wood, aluminium, it's a tube amplifier, we, we really wanted something that's a mix between modern and old school. The inspiration for this is all retro future. We, we wanted something that's really going to remind you um, the times where you had something that 
you know, you, you wanted to look at it, you wanted to enjoy it, and I think, I think this does the tricks. You want to have one maybe in your kitchen, maybe in your living room, maybe in your office. You, you should buy at least three or four of them for every room <laughs> in your house. Really. So, um, yeah. And uh, with Torsten, we've, we've been working a lot on making it amazing. You didn't see there, but like, if you come next to it, it turn on by itself, and it's just, it's, it's magic. So keep on going. It's going to look beautiful in your modern house. That's never going to look like that, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> so go for that. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, the connectivity. I think that's, that's your turn, Torsten. Are you drunk enough? No, not yet. Can so now is the time you should all go to sleep or go back to the buffet. Torsten yeah, is yeah, going go, to... Yeah, go, go, go back to the buffet. He's yeah, going to bore the crap out of you. Sorry for that. Well, so I didn't actually write this presentation. I only designed this shit. I actually wanted to do something really cool. And I think this is a cool product. Okay? That was the most important thing to me. That's why we've got Julian doing the interior design, the industrial design. We want a product that's not boring. There's so many boring products. Uh, cheers. One interesting thing is you can feed this thing on 12 volt. So if you've got a boat, if you've got a car, uh, you know, a recreational vehicle, or one of those off-grid houses or anything, 12 volt DC will do just as well as the AC. You can stick a SD card in, a memory stick, Wi-Fi, network wired. You can connect your uh, smart TV. Okay, they tell me to turn the volume down. <laughs> so, and uh, you've got a coaxial input, let's say, for your CD player, if you happen to have one, or let's say a Blu-ray player or something, if you still play discs. I don't know, do you remember CDs? Those are those round things, they used them in the last millennium for storage of digital audio. I don't know what happened to them. They really, they really seem funky. Uh, and you've got, of course, line inputs, so... Pretty much any way you want to connect, and uh, the network connectivity is industrial standard, DLNA, uh, you have AirPlay, and airplay? yeah, you've got AirPlay for uh, all the Mac fan boys, and uh, yeah. Yeah, just keep going. Okay, okay, I'll do it. So yeah, so well, you've got all of all all of those options coming in here. Yeah, you can connect an echo dot via wire or uh, not. And it basically does. And the key want. thing oh, is, no. on all inputs, it's full high res, so it's 192k, 24 bit. It's a little bit like 4k TV. You know, there's not that much uh, recordings out there, though some very good ones. But if you've got them, smoke it. This is actually generally what the competition does when they make a speaker like this. How do I know? We bought them, we took them apart, we looked how they're doing it. It's boring actually what they're doing. I'm not going to go into the tech, but the bottom line is a lot of it uh, involves compromises in sound quality. And especially clarity, resolution, those things that at least us high-end people value. Everyone else is happy with a good beat, that's okay. But some people want more, more better. So, we don't want this. So what we do instead is a little more complex. We of course have the same Wi-Fi chip as everybody else. Yeah, come on, you can't beat it, you have to join. But instead of letting this thing do all the processing, we go straight into an audiophile DAC, convert the signal to analog, and then everything else stays in the analog domain. Volume control, all these processing for this thing because to get some decent bass out of a small box, it doesn't happen natural. You have to break some laws of physics. The other thing that we've done here, because we've got a DAC, we've got a switching power converter, we've got switching power supplies. They actually put them all on one clock. And yeah, we come to that. And the amp itself actually is a tube amp, but we're using a small tube that will last a long time. And we're then using a current multiplier that just simply multiplies the output about a thousand fold in power, but just follows the signal. And this runs actually not exactly at 1.5 megahertz, it runs at 1.411 or 1.536 megahertz, but meaning those are linked to. How to type. This is linked to this. 
So all, all the clocks run on one clock. Everything. So there's no chance of anything to create any interference, beat notes, everything. So that is really, the speed is quite unusual. This is probably the fastest amp in the world. I don't know. Maybe somebody's made something faster. Usually somebody did. But it's not, it's bloody fast. It's got tubes. It's all analog. Audio file DAC. Oh, wait, wait, we, we promised you a speaker, didn't we? Do we have anything on the speaker? Oh, we have the Bluetooth. Ah, oh, the Bluetooth is the same thing here. We've been doing before, same thing. You know, again, don't, don't use the system on the chip. Don't use the analog output. A lot of uh, speakers like this I've seen, the Bluetooth output is analog, goes to an ADC, gets digitalized, and then goes into the uh, Wi-Fi chipset. Is that insane? Or so we don't want to do that. Instead, what we want, we, want, we don't want just sound, we don't want just treble and bass. Music is about emotion. Music is about how it makes you feel, not about what you hear, at least for me. So here we've got the whole amplifier technology and DAC technology, which has been building on all these things that we've been doing for years. Things like high quality clocks, doing as much as possible analog, not digital. That's been, we've been doing it for decades. No, preferably no oversampling, minimal digital processing. Keep it in the analog domain if you have to do something. But, as I said, we promise you speakers, no? Of course, this is a speaker, this is not an amp, this is not a duck, this is not a streamer. Oh, it is. It's all of it. <laughs> it's all of it. But That's amazing. This, this thing here is interesting. I think you've already heard it when you walk past. It doesn't sound like it's a little box. It doesn't sound like white mono. Did you hear that? Yeah, 27 drivers in it. <laughs> yeah, not 27 drivers in it. Oh, but, really? but what this is designed on is actually some technology that was originally developed in Berlin, which was at the time East Berlin, in East Germany. We've built on that. Uh, I was involved in the team then in the 1980s, which is a long time ago. So what we do is, we actually have multiple drivers, and we have a mechanical arrangement, and a signal going into them that actually can create a really wide, deep and high sound state from this, instead of this and this. That's what this does. It looks unusual. And yeah, I, I gave him a serious headache on the design, of course. And uh, the other thing we did with this, we put a bass system in that's tuned extremely low. And again, you've heard it already. Those are passive radiators, quite large ones, as you can see. Steel. As big as possible. As big as possible. Again, I gave him more headaches. And. Uh, the, the result is you can get really low bass out of a really compact system. So you get a single, by high-end standards, very small box, which sounds anything but small. It's the best we can make today by a long stretch. And it's yeah, yeah, been a long great. work, it's been a lot of effort from everyone in the team. That took us more than a year to put together. It was really not easy. And the other thing that we've did is, one problem you've got is whenever you put a speaker somewhere, if you don't put it exactly where the speaker designer intended it to go, it'll sound not very good. Here, we said, well, why should I dictate to you where you put my speaker? Put it wherever you like. It'll sound right. We just need to tell where you put it. So the first thing we did is we put 20,000 buttons on there that allowed you to tweak this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, this parameter, to just put it exactly where you want it. And you would have a 100 page manual where you can go through this and say, okay, uh, uh, my speaker is here. Oh, oh okay, okay, I do. And then we said, oh, there's got to be a smarter way because that's really, 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 really stupid. And that's exactly what we did automatic room tailoring. This is the same thing you get in a digital meter to measure the distance in a room. A lot of builders use those. I use them when I work on my own house. It tells you how far away from a wall you are. 
once you know how far away from a wall you are, left, right, and back, you actually know where you are in the room. And you can adjust everything just so. So you don't need to pick, read the 100 page manual. And again, it's all done in the analog domain. We don't try to even out every little wrinkle in the frequency response. That doesn't sound good. We just try to make sure the balance of t sound is right wherever you put it. So don't worry, put it where you want, it'll be okay. <coughs> and yeah, thank you. Uh, back to serious drinking, I suggest. <laughs> and thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Give, give another hand for the whole team here.